uh, when you come when you come back from from a place like Australia or wherever, which passport uh, immigration desk do you go through? I ask you that because of your your status. An Irish just... passport. No, I can go to anyone. You know. You can. They let me through anyone. Yes, yes, they all know me, so I just get through. You know. But, but you are officially a stateless yeah. person. Aren't I've been you? through Polish stateless persons passport control and got through all right. <laughs> but the, with an Irish passport, they think you're an Iranian these days. You see. <laughs> He's flogging him twenty quid a time to be Iranian. Yeah. But I mean, fill, fill me in on the on the passport situation because I don't quite understand how it came to be that you became a stateless citizen. Well, apparently there was a law was passed when the Commonwealth was being rearranged that they had to pass a law, and among those laws was that anybody who was born of a, an Irish a father who was born in Ireland before 1900 was no longer British but stateless. And uh, so I. I didn't know what to do. I felt, I felt deprived. I'd just been in a war. I mean, a lot of people went in the war, but I was there as well. Some people noticed me. And um, I, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do. I said, well, you'll have to, you'll have to apply again. I said, no. So I thought, oh, look, my father's Irish. So I phoned up the Irish Embassy. There was Mr. Kelly there. I said, Mr. Kelly? He said, yes. I said, can I bring an Irish? He said, oh, Jesus, yes, come round. We're very short of people. So <laughs> <laughs> one round. And uh, I'm Irish now. Irish, yeah. <laughs> 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 Well, this is the best part of the Home Office, though. I wrote to the Home Office and said, you know, um, mm. what, in, in the light of the fact that I was stateless, what would you advise the passport to get there? And they said I could have become a Hindu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could become a Pakistani and get an Indian passport. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, why didn't you, you, you were in fact, they, they wanted you to, in fact, become a British citizen, didn't they? I well, mean, they said you could apply again, and it would right. entail taking oath of allegiance to the Queen. And I thought, I'd never be disloyal to the Queen. You ask her. <laughs> <laughs> And is it true that Prince Charles tried to intervene? He wrote to me and said, Spike, he said, take an oath of allegiance. It's not, it's not hard. He said, I had to do it. I said, ah, but it's your mother, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're living rent-free in the palace, you know. You get your ass kicked out if you don't say yes, man. Does this still make you cross, though, that, that business? It's very painful, yes. So it's a very painful situation to arrive at. I wanted to be British because my, fa my mother's English, my father's Irish, my grandmother was Scottish. I only needed Welsh to make the whole, the whole four, right? Yeah. But now that I'm Irish, I'm glad to say that Ireland beat England at rugby. <laughs> <laughs> Should we organise a petition? Uh, well, you, well, no, it's, it's hopeless. They have lots of people have written. They've had about about 160 letters on my behalf from various my regiment, my captain of my regiment, and all that, saying how brilliant I was in action during the last war. Well, I mean, we'll come on to that later. I mean. <laughs>